A Lack of Jobs is Where It Starts by Bill Mitchell As a follow-up to my recent blog on the Sydney riots, the Sydney Morning Herald's article When Rage Hits Boiling Point by pa- Paula Totaro and Ellen Connolly argues that the view that the violence is because of a couple of bad kids, which is the main claim of the mass media and public officials, including the Premier, is far too superficial. They cite Mick Kennedy, who is a former senior New South Wales policeman, now an academic at UWS, who is angry at the response of the intellectuals and academics, its politicians and opinion leaders. He is cited as saying, quote, when Police Commissioner Ken Maroney talks about growing up on a housing estate, about childhood disadvantage, and making choices, I know what he is talking about. I was a Barnardo's kid. I, too, left school at 14, got myself an apprenticeship, found a secure job. But that was then. Even with very little or no family support in those days, you could always get a good job. When he and Bob Carr talk about making choices in life, about personal responsibility, it just isn't that simple anymore. Things have changed, enormously. They talk about choices. We had an abundance of choices. I went to tech four nights a week. It was hard, but I wasn't anything exceptional. But what choice do they have now in Macri fields? It was speaking, I was speaking to a friend from Barnardo's this week, and we both agreed that if we had grown up there in this generation, we would have ended up exactly the same, part of the mob. End quote. Kennedy and fellow academic, urban sociologist Michael Bounds, say that this is not an isolated riot, and there is, an, there is a substantial research literature pointing to the source of the problems. Kennedy is cited as saying, quote, When you have marginalized people, low unemployment rates, when, quote, When you have marginalized people, low employment rates, a concentration of single, stressed parents and communities with poor access to resources and poor health care, difficult transport, and little opportunity for meaningful employment. When you put all these things together, it is a recipe for disaster. And it is the same all over the world. End quote. The authors outline the context of the post-war public housing estate boom, which was a plan to transfer, quote, to transfer infrastructure, industry, and housing out to the green belts of big Australian cities. The principle was a good one, and rapid growth occurred in the 1960s and 1970s. But its spread also coincided with the beginning of the recession in the early 1970s and complex societal restructuring. Youth unemployment began to emerge as a new pressure, as did familial breakdown, drug and alcohol abuse, end quote. But Michael Bound says that the rising unemployment meant that, quote, increasingly people who were placed there were people who were classically in need of emergency housing. What was intended as public housing evolved into what became welfare housing, end quote. I note that the largest employer of youth at the time, the public sector, started to cut back on its role as an employer at this time via the destruction of low-skilled jobs throughout the sector and also the apprenticeship scheme. Message. A lack of jobs is a passport to disaster. A fully employed economy minimizes these dysfunctions, which affect us all. <laughs>